Hey folks, Ariel over here. The first part of this video was filmed back on May 18th and after a little bit here you will see why I'm waiting until July to show it to you because I had some more pieces to put together but the first part of what you're seeing here is from about the middle of May of this year just so that makes sense. Hey folks, Ariel over here. I'm gonna try to do this video. I don't know if the weather will cooperate. It's getting windy again. It's been raining off and on all day and uh, hailed hard last night and is supposed to snow tonight and tomorrow morning. But the garden is all planted. Um, most of it, the seeds aren't up yet. Um, so I'm the first little teeny weeny knuckle of a, a sprout is pushing up. But the, some things that I start from uh, starts from a local greenhouse are up like cabbage and broccoli um, the garlic is up that was planted last fall onions and so on anyway what I'm doing today if the camera can hear me is we are putting some beneficial nematodes into the soil now I've done this three years now I believe if you've been following along here for a while you'll probably remember that uh, I had a year where I had flea beetles. They, they're not actually a flea, but they're little teeny black beetles that jump all over things that positively decimated everything in the brassica family. That would be all the cabbages, cauliflowers, broccolis, um, beets, uh, radishes, that stuff is all in a similar family. And we grow a lot of that because it's what usually grows well here. So that was very sad because normally I make a lot of things out of those crops for the year. Um, and they, it was a, such a volume of little beetles that they ate all the plants down to a skeleton like less than three days. Anyway, so I did a lot of trying to figure out what I could do to stop that from happening again. Um, and without using, you know, some kind of toxic chemical because I don't want that in my food or killing off all the other good bugs I have in my soil and so on. So one of the things I discovered is that there are various, um, there are lots, probably millions, I don't know, of kinds of nematodes in the world, but some of them, uh, one particular strain anyway, likes eating the larva of flea beetles. Flea beetles life cycle is they go down in the soil and lay their eggs um, into the soil. You don't see that, they're very teeny, uh, but then they hatch and they crawl back up and eat things like your cabbages. Um, so these little nematodes, it looks like a little teeny weeny uh, well you can't see anything but a powder they're microscopic um, supposed to have 10 million in that little baggie um, that's inside the big baggie anyway what they do is they crawl around microscopically in the soil and eat the guts out of the um, flea beetle eggs and then they never hatch and then they never eat my plants so that's been working really well um, I've been meaning to do a video on this each of those years and every time I get them I need to put them in the soil and I'm in a hurry and I never get to it so I'm trying to do that this year because it may be helpful for somebody else and you can look up lists there are other beneficial nematodes um, these ones eat more than just flea beetles that's why I'm using but there's long lists of like this strain will help control these bugs this strain will help control these and so on um, so there may be an application for something you're struggling with. Um, I got mine from a company called Nature's Good Guys, I believe .com. There is uh, probably other good companies. That's the one I had happened to order from. I've been very happy with them. And so I have continued ordering from them. The best test I had of this one year is I'd watered these, which I'm about to do, into the garden beds. And do you have to do this every year? Probably not. Our winters are so long and so cold, I've never been sure if any of them will survive in the soil till the next spring. And I like all of my cabbage and such crops so much that I've never been willing to risk um, not having any. So one of these years I'll try not adding any again and see if we've got rid of the population of flea beetle eggs in the soil. But anyway, um, I wired them into all the garden beds. And I had a couple flea beetles. I saw a few little black specks, but they didn't really hurt the plant. Certainly didn't strip it down to a skeleton. Whereas the bed just behind the actual garden beds, 
that had other things growing in it like um, radishes and all kinds of flowers and herbs and stuff that was just going to seed. Uh, that I had not put any of these nematodes in and the flea beetles right there a few feet from my other plants just ate the radishes down to a complete skeleton. So that gave me some confidence that this wasn't just a coincidence, it is actually making a difference. So anyway, um, it does not, the proportions of how much water you mix this stuff in the actual part we're mixing in is just the little powder in this little teeny bag um, doesn't matter all you're doing is getting these into the soil and then they can crawl around in the soil so whatever amount of water you need to get it watered into the surface area that you're putting it on so I am going to take this little packet of powder and put it in a watering can fill it up with water and um, water it primarily into the beds I have brassicas in but I like to spread some in all the garden beds because I do rotate things through the years as to which bed they're in and I don't really want flea beetles hatching out of any of them so that's what I'm gonna do and you do want to do this these guys are somewhat UV sensitive on a morning evening or overcast day I have a very overcast day and I think it's about to snow so um, this should be good for that but just be aware they uh, they need a little bit of time to make their little way down into the soil and so the soil should be moist and it shouldn't be bright and sunny or they may all fry up on the surface before they can do anything useful this is a very good day for not having that happen And here is what the cabbage and broccoli bed is looking like several months later in early to mid July. You can see we've got broccoli heads starting down in there. But what I really want to show you is we do have some flea beetles. See the edge of this leaf, all those little kind of shotgun holes. Or this outer leaf has a few holes. So I come back to the cabbages, the sun's nicely backlighting them. You can see the top edge of this leaf has a little bit of chewing, but that's it. That's all of it. We've got some really, really nice cabbage heads going already. Um, they have not decimated the cabbages I first, or any of the brassicas. I first saw the first ones start showing up a few weeks back, and it always makes me nervous after what happened that one year. Um, but the little nematodes in the soil must be doing their work and I can handle having a leaf or two edge nibbled like that when we're getting beautiful heads to grow like this because if there was actually none around then the nematodes would die because their food source was gone. So it's fine to have a few but it ha seems to have been working to really protect uh, all of the brassica crops and we have 
nothing remotely going on like that one year that they just ate them down to skeletons within a few days. I just can't believe actually this one's probably the biggest currently head we have going but for this time of year that's getting to be a very nice size head and I have a velcro who wants her belly wrapped. Is that what you want? You're gonna bite me? Yeah you only like your belly rubbed for so long. Yeah. And now by July 28 we're looking like this. Head's ready to pick. There is a little bit of bug damage on some of the leaves. That bigger hole is not even from a flea beetle. I don't think I can even find any flea beetle damage anymore. And the heads are looking beautiful. So, maybe worth, oh, I can find a flea beetle. I lied, there's one right there, eating a little hole. So, there are still a few. They're not damaging anything. They can have a few bites, I don't mind as long as they don't decimate everything. So it may be worth looking into beneficial nematodes if you have flea beetles specifically or other beneficial bugs that may help whatever other issues you might have going on. Hopefully that's helpful to somebody. Thank you everyone for watching. It means a lot and I hope you learned something along the way. If you know somebody else who would enjoy this as well, share it with them.